The Lion King. As the African sun peeked over the horizon, the animals of the savanna gathered at Pride Rock to honor King Mufasa and Queen Sarabi's newborn lion cub, Simba. The proud parents had just welcomed the tiny cub to the great circle of life. Rafiki, a wise baboon, presented the future king to the savanna. The animals cheered and stamped their feet in approval. Scar, Mufasa's brother, didn't attend the ceremony. Scar had been next in line to rule until Simba was born. He wanted to get rid of the young cub so he could be king. Life's not fair, is it? Scar complained to a mouse he was about to eat. Just then, Mufasa's advisor Zazu flew by. King Mufasa's on his way, he announced. Mufasa was not happy that Scar was absent from the celebration. Sarabi and I didn't see you at the presentation of Simba, said the king. As Mufasa's brother, Scar should have been first to greet the cub. Scar shrugged and told the king that he forgot. Then he walked back to his den. Don't turn your back on me, Scar, said Mufasa. Perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me, Scar warned. As time passed, Simba grew into a curious cub. Mufasa had promised to teach him about being king. So one morning, he took Simba to the top of Pride Rock. Look, Simba, said Mufasa, everything the light touches is our kingdom. But he cautioned his son never to go beyond the boundaries of the kingdom. Later that day, Simba visited his uncle Scar. My dad just showed me the whole kingdom, and I'm going to rule it all, he said excitedly. With an evil grin, Scar asked if Mufasa had shown Simba the elephant graveyard beyond the northern border. Only the bravest lions go there, he added. Scar knew Simba couldn't resist the chance to prove his bravery. Come on, Simba told his best friend Nala. I just heard about this great place. The cubs were eager to explore the graveyard, so they lied to their mothers asking if they could go to the waterhole. Their mothers agreed, but only if Zazu went with them. Once they were in the savanna, Simba and Nala ditched Zazu. As they neared the graveyard, the friends laughed and pounced on each other before tumbling into a dark ravine filled with bones and elephant skulls. Dark mist covered the ground. Simba and Nala cautiously walked toward an enormous skull. We could get in big trouble, Nala whispered. Zazu, who had been searching for the cubs, knew they were in terrible danger. As soon as he found them, three hyenas emerged from the shadows and backed them into a corner. We'd love you to stick around for dinner, said Shinzi, the leader of the trio. Simba, Nala, and Zazu ran for it, but the hyenas caught Zazu, so Simba ran back to help him. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size, Simba said in his bravest voice. Without hesitation, the hyenas charged after Simba and Nala. The cubs were no match for the hyenas. Just when it looked like they were done for, Mufasa arrived and saved them. The frightened hyenas quickly ran away. Simba was in big trouble, but the king didn't stay angry for long. We'll always be together, right? asked Simba. Look at the stars, Mufasa said. The great kings of the past looked down on us from those stars. Just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you, and so will I. Meanwhile, Scar was angry that the hyenas had failed to kill Simba. I practically gift-wrapped those cubs for you, he told them. But Scar had a new plan. Be prepared, he announced, for the death of the king. Why, 
is he sick? Asked a hyena named Ed. No, fool. We're going to kill him. Simba, too, he said. The next day, Scar brought Simba to a gorge where wildebeests were grazing nearby. Now you wait here. Your father has a marvelous surprise for you, he said. When Scar was safely away, the hyenas chased the wildebeest towards Simba. Then Scar ran off to find Mufasa. Stampede! In the gorge! Simba's down there, he said. Mufasa immediately hurried off to save his son. Mufasa managed to rescue Simba, but the herd carried the king farther down the gorge. When he tried to climb out, the rocks crumbled beneath him. To Mufasa's relief, he saw Scar above him. Brother, help me, he cried out. But Scar dug his claws into Mufasa's paws. Long live the king, he whispered, before throwing his brother back into the gorge. Once the stampede cleared, Simba found his father lying lifeless at the base of a cliff. He tearfully nudged Mufasa's paw, but the great king did not stir. Then Scar appeared. Simba, what have you done? It was an accident, said Simba. I, I didn't mean for it to happen. What am I gonna do? The poor cub was overwhelmed with grief. Run away, Simba. Scar instructed, run away and never return. Scar watched as Simba fled the only home he'd ever known. Once the cub was out of sight, Scar ordered the hyenas to kill him. They chased Simba through the gorge and up a steep cliff. Desperate to escape, Simba leaped into a thorny thicket below. The hyena skidded to a stop when they saw the thicket. He's as good as dead out there, they agreed before returning to Pride Rock. Back at Pride Rock, Scar broke the news of Mufasa's death. Sniffling between words, he explained that Simba's young life was cut short, too. It is with a heavy heart that I assume the throne, he said before declaring he would rule alongside the hyenas. The lions hung their heads as King Scar ascended Pride Rock. Simba ran and ran until he couldn't run anymore. Exhausted, he fainted under the heat of the desert sun, where a meerkat named Timon and a warthog named Pumbaa found him. The cheerful friends brought Simba home with them. When Simba woke up, he was still sad. But Timon and Pumbaa explained that when life gets them down, a certain phrase helps them feel better. Repeat after me, said Timon before clearing his throat. throat) Hakuna Matata. Simba didn't understand. So Pumbaa explained, it means no worries. Simba liked this motto and his new friend's carefree lifestyle, so he decided to stay with them in the jungle. Years passed and Simba grew into a strong young lion. He tried to forget about the past, but as he gazed into the night sky with Timon and Pumbaa one night, he couldn't help thinking of the great kings and everything his father had taught him. Simba sighed. He didn't know where he belonged in the great circle of life. One day, as Timon and Pumbaa strolled through the jungle, a lioness attacked Pumbaa. The terrified warthog ran away, but got stuck under a tree root. Simba rushed to protect his friend. As Simba wrestled the lioness, she pinned him to the ground. Simba quickly realized It was his old friend Nala. As the sun set, Simba showed Nala around the beautiful jungle. They were so happy to see each other again, but something was on Nala's mind. We've really needed you at home, she said. Under King Scar, the pride lands had become barren, and the animals were starving. I can't go back, he said. 
you wouldn't understand. That night, wise old Rafiki found Simba alone and deep in thought. You're Mufasa's boy, he said. He's alive, and I'll show him to you. Curious, Simba followed Rafiki to the edge of a stream. As he looked into the water, his reflection changed shape and became the face of Mufasa. You see, he lives in you, said the baboon. Mufasa's face then appeared in the clouds and began to speak. Look inside yourself, Simba. You are my son and the one true king. The clouds faded away and Simba knew what he had to do. I'm going back, he told Rafiki, and immediately set off for Pride Rock. When Simba reached the kingdom, he couldn't believe his eyes. The once bountiful land was now dry and barren. Just then, Nala, Timon, and Pumbaa ran up behind him. Rafiki had told them that Simba had returned home, and they all wanted to help their friend reclaim the throne. At your service, my liege, said Pumbaa. While Simba searched for Scar, Timon and Pumbaa distracted the hyenas. Simba soon found the false king arguing with his mother, and when Simba saw Scar strike her, he let out an angry roar and lunged at his uncle. Simba, I'm a little surprised to see you. Alive, said Scar, eyeing the hyenas. The choice is yours, Scar, said Simba. Either step down or fight. Scar wouldn't give up the throne that easily, so he backed Simba over the edge of Pride Rock. With his nephew dangling below, Scar whispered into Simba's ear, I killed Mufasa. Anger rushed through Simba's body. With a mighty roar, he climbed over the edge and pinned Scar to the ground. Tell them the truth, he cried out. Reluctantly, Scar admitted to the animals of the Pride Lands that it was he who had killed Mufasa. Victorious, Simba ordered Scar to leave the kingdom. But when Simba turned his back, Scar attacked him again. With a swipe of his powerful paw, Simba knocked his uncle over the edge, where a pack of hungry hyenas was waiting. Scar was never seen in the savannah again. Finally, Simba took his rightful place as king. All the animals rejoiced at his return, and under his rule, the Pride Lands once again flourished. Many months later, the animals of the savannah again made their way to the foot of Pride Rock. Rafiki presented the new princess, the daughter of King Simba and Queen Nala, to the cheering crowd below. Simba was so proud. He had finally found his place in the great circle of life.